Well, hey guys, today uh, the micro course is going to be about time budgeting and especially the first hour of your work week. Um, I've had conversations with many of you about budgeting time or time management. And for those of you who work for yourself or now a lot of you that are working from home, kind of creating your own schedule, this can be super important. Um, I've toyed with a lot of different things over the years and, um, you know, I've been working up for myself and trying to create my own time schedule since 2013 and uh and so it can definitely be a challenge so this maybe this will be helpful for you for those of you who are newly working from home that's probably the biggest adjustment i think to working for yourself or not being in an office is just budgeting your time um, when no one else is telling you when to do certain things so uh, i'm i'm hopeful this will be helpful for you and um, this is how i do it Okay, so building the system. Uh, I am a big fan of Archimedes and Wilfredo Pareto. So these two guys, um, both kind of, one's a philosopher, one's an economist. Uh, Archimedes is known for the quote that says, you give me a lever long enough and I can move the world. So the whole idea here is leveraging your time and using it well. So that's why I use this first hour of the week. Uh, it's really important to me. I try to leverage one full hour at the very beginning of my work week, and it ends up saving me a ton of time, I think. Uh, and then Wilfredo Pareto is the economist. If you ever heard of the 80-20 principle or the Pareto principle, basically just says, you know, it was it was an, he was looking at countries and he basically found that across any country, any economy, that 80% of the wealth was held by 20% of the people. And then he looked at a bunch of other things and ended up realizing that, you know, 80% of our inputs typically are uh, result in eight, tw or 20% of our inputs result in 80% of our outputs. So, you know, for instance, in this situation, 20% of our time, uh, it usually gives us 80% of our results. So I try to really prioritize and spend a lot of time there figuring out at the beginning of the week, what are the 20% that are going to give me the 80%. Um, and I try to strip out as much as I can. So, so steps and I'll keep it really simple. And if you guys want to have a longer conversation about this, call me, text me, I can do more on this if it's interesting to you. Um, cause I give it a lot of thought, but anyway, here are kind of the steps first, get an external brain and we'll talk about that. Uh, two, the brain dump three, prioritize four, build your week. And then five, just make a decision, decide. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the external brain and the brain dump. Um, so number one, we, we need to understand how our brain works. So it takes uh, brain power to remember things, right? So we want our brain to be available to us, to like create a problem solve, to do our jobs well, um, to kind of take on uh, challenges. We don't want to have to use our brain to try to remember like the slog of information that we need at in a future moment or tasks that we need to complete or that sort of thing. And so when we're using our brain in that way, like, you know, if you ever had the, the feeling of kind of like you got that thing in the, the back of your head that just like is bothering you that you need to get done. And it just is kind of a stress over time. Right. So remembering things and then remembering things on time. Right. So it's like, not only do you need that information in the future, you need that information at a certain time. So it's like, you have a task you need to complete and it needs to be completed on this time, or you need to call somebody back and you need to call them back tomorrow. That's really, really challenging. And it's hard for our brain to do that. And then what's really frustrating is when you don't remember it on time, uh, or you're like really having to allocate a lot of your brain resources to remember it. So you're forgetting other things. Um, so what I like to do is outsource my memory and that's just going to save energy and stress, right? So it's like, how can I use a system to make it to where I don't have to use my brain for that sort of thing? And, and in my job, I have a lot of details and things and to do's and tasks that I have to remember and especially like at certain times. Um, so this has become really important for me. Um, and one of the things that I use and like what I used to like to think about is the brain dump. Um, so all I mean by that is as soon as you have the thought, um, and before bed, right? So those are kind of the two things. So, um, what I use is I use the reminders app. I have an iPhone. I use the reminders app all the time and I am all about Siri. So like, I like to use Siri and I like to not have to type. So I'll just be like, Hey, and my phone's next to me. So I'm going to say, say this and it's going to yell at me, but Hey Siri, remind me to X, Y, and Z tomorrow morning. Um, so 
that's really, really important to me. So for instance, if it's eight o'clock at night and I have a thought like, oh, I need to do this tomorrow, I will immediately grab my phone. Hey Siri, remind me to do X, Y, and Z tomorrow morning. Or if I'm in the middle of a dinner with my family and I see somebody he's called and I need to call him back. Hey Siri, remind me to call Johnny back in 10 minutes. Um, so I use that all the time. So it's not, it's the specific task. So try to be specific when you do it. I need to do this X, Y, and Z. I need to get this result done. And then when, when I want to be reminded that is like game changer. Okay. And I like to do that as soon as I have the thought. So as soon as the thought enters my mind, I don't want that to bog me down for the however much time I'm going to immediately put it into my external brain and get it off my mind. And, and then I can trust that it's going to pop up when I need it. Right. Okay, so then right before bed, if you guys are like me, when I lay down at night is when I'll, I get bombarded by the things that I need to get done the next day. So before I go to bed, I will go over to my phone and I'll try to like spend five minutes going, what things are on my mind? What things do I need to do tomorrow? And I get it done so that I can like fall asleep quick. Um, so those are a couple of things I do. The brain dump and then having an external brain. Use it, try it, see if it's not a game changer for you. Okay, so then once you have that, like you're accumulating it. And for me, I take two days off. So a lot of times by the first day of my work week when it rolls around, I've accumulated quite a few things in my reminders app that I'm gonna need to get done, okay? So then I the next is like building the week. So the first hour, I allocate the first hour of me sitting down in my office. So for me, that's Tuesday morning. So let's say Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. From nine to 10, I'm sitting down at my desk and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out a sheet of paper, like for me it's like a notepad, and I'm gonna put it all down on paper. So I'm gonna take out my reminders app, anything I've put in there, I'm gonna write them down, okay? So that's first. Then I'm gonna think through my week and go, okay, what are like recurring things that I need to get, that I have this week? So, you know, do I have uh, any like recurring meetings, like for me, like Bible studies, Friday nights, date night for Tay and I, um, do I, does Ransom have any t-ball games? And I'm just gonna go through and try to remember every single thing that I need to get done. And then are there any tasks specifically this week that I wanna get done? Are there any projects I'm working on? Like what are all the things that I'm trying to get done? And I try to really take my time on this. Like don't rush it, okay? Cause it's kind of a measure twice, cut once type thing. You wanna get it all out there, okay? Then I start building my week. So I'm going to open up my Google Calendar. For me, it's my Google Calendar, whatever you use for a calendar. Uh, Outlook, maybe you have like a physical one. I like a digital one just because it's with me all the time. Um, and so as you start to build your week, the first thing, you got to work backwards, right? So don't start with work, start with your off time. Okay, so for me, if I don't build an off time, it's not going to happen. It's just like budgeting. So if you don't budget to save first, you're not going to save. The same with off time, especially in my world, I could work every day of the week, 20 hours a day. So I try to build in my off time first. So for me, that's Sunday, Monday. All right. And then I will, you know, I will block that on my calendar and I'll, the next slide, um, like I'll go through in um, the next slide and we'll, I'll show you my actual calendar or example of my calendar. Okay. So building your off time. Uh, build in your personal priorities. So for me, like going to work out would be personal priority. I read and pray in the morning, um, spend some time with Taylor, uh, spending time with kiddos, any hobbies that you want to take on time for, you know, X, Y, and Z that's personal priorities. So I'll build that in. Then I'm going to build in my most important projects. Um, so these are like, this is work, so we're jumping into work now, but this is projects. So things that I've been working on that are important, maybe more long-term, like these are the things that get overwhelmed by urgent things. So I need to, I wanna build those in and I try to build them at the beginning of the day. So I try to get them done before I can get overwhelmed by other things, before I look at my email, before I like am responding to like urgent texts and phone calls. Okay, so that's next. Then I build in what I call your blocks. So for me, this is like work practices that move the needle. So being in my job, this is like, you know, replying to phone calls for to leads or um, this is, uh, yeah, it's a lot for me. It's like a lot of phone calls generally, um, but these are like your business practices that you need to be doing every single day. So whatever that is in your job, you probably have things that you do every single day these are build blocks for those like blocks of time. So for me, usually it's an hour, 
hour at a time where I'm making phone calls. Um, and then I have blocks for like, you know, building out a newsletter that I do every week, searching the MLS, uh, for homes for my buyers, that sort of thing. Um, and then I also create blocks. So there are, you know, variable blocks. So the nature of my job is I don't know every week, you know, when a home's going to hit the market that one of my clients is going to want to see. So I block out time. that's kind of like flex time for showings and for, you know, consultations. And I block those out in my afternoons and then those are variable. So if nobody ends up needing to show, see a home that day, it becomes off time. Okay. So it's kind of like variable blocks. You'll see the colors on the next screen. And then once you've built all of that in and I, Oh, on the blocks, one more time, one more thing is I, I block for tasks. So it's just a block for tasks. And then I put in each task block specifically what tasks I'm going to accomplish during that hour. Okay. So I have a block for phone calls. I have a block for tasks. Okay. And during that hour, I know what like things I'm going to accomplish during that time. And then create white space. So just as you're looking at your calendar and you're looking at it, is there enough like white space? Have you created enough margin? If it's just like stacked, boom, 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 boom. Number one, it's not going to all get accomplished. Number two, you're going to be burnt out, like create no in advance, like be aware of how much energy and you have in a given day and what you can accomplish and then create enough margin for you to have white space. If you don't have white space, you're going to get, you're going to burn out. Right? So you just need to know. And then step seven is just make the decision. Just decide that once it's down and you've like finished the calendar, it's done. And once you decide your hours over, you start working. Okay. But those are like, that is the, the process I go through the first hour of every single week. Um, and like I said, this has been a work in progress. This is something I've kind of worked on and tweaked over time. I've taken snippets from a lot of different people. You know, I've had a real estate coach. I've had, uh, I've taken classes and I've kind of pieced this together. So this is what works for me. You know, you can try it, you can tweak it for yourself. Um, so let's, I'll show you a sample week for me. So this is a like, sample calendar Sunday through Saturday. So like I said, first thing I'm doing is I'm building in my off time. So that's not only like days I'm off, which for me is Sunday, Monday, cause I have to work long days, Saturdays generally, but also like what time in the morning am I going to start work? What time am I going to stop work? Right? So those are my blocks. So you'll notice I have a voicemail that says, Hey, if you're calling me after 7 PM, um, I will call you back in the morning. So if I get a call after 7 PM, uh, unless I'm like act actively working a negotiation, um, I will let that ring through and then I'll call back the next morning. Right. Um, and I'll probably do a brain dump reminder that night. Hey Siri, remind me to call so-and-so back tomorrow morning. Okay. So that it gets done right. Then I'm going to put in my personal priorities. So that's like what I want to do in the mornings, drink coffee, read, pray, uh, I got my workout time. I've got Ransom's T-ball game practice. Friday date night every week, going strong nine years. Um, church, Bible study. So I'm putting in all the things that are important to me. If I oh, I want to have coffee with a friend on Thursday. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm building in my, my blocks. So for me, because of my job, I'm putting in blocks in the week for showings so that I have time available that I've set aside uh, for doing that. If, or if somebody calls and is like, Hey, I need to sell my house. I can go over to their house and, and I have a block set aside for that. Um, so I do that in orange cause it's not definite. Right. So, but I know in advance. So if someone calls me on Tuesday and is like, Hey, I need to see a house. I can go, okay, do you want to see it on Thursday at five or do you want to see it on Friday at three? Right. Um, so those are those blocks. And then obviously I've got to schedule that this hour. It's like, it's like the cornerstone of the week. So that's got to come first. So I'm just going to go day by day. Right. And then I've got my calls, my call blocks, try to build those in. Cause those are super important. Tuesdays I draft my newsletter and then I've got my task block. So you can see, I'm kind of just building, I'm working backwards here. Notice my task block kind of try, I try to make it come after all my important stuff. Um, so that it doesn't take up all of my time. Um, so that's like a sample week for me. Not every week is exactly the same, although there is like a general framework that I use, um, but you've got to make it work for you. I like to work out at one. Most people like to work out either at night or in the morning. 
um, breaks up my day. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any questions, you can certainly holler at me, text me, call me, email me, comment on this. Um, but anyway, if you want me to do more of these, I'd love to do that. And you guys have a great week.